So Tears of the Kingdom has been out for some time now and with this video I wanted to bring it back to my roots again. If you don't know how this channel started, first of all, it was a speedrunning tutorial and commentary channel. I would commentate on different speedruns for Breath of the Wild, explain how they work and what speedrunners like me would do to go fast in these games and I think it's a good time now to start uh, with the journey into Tears of the Kingdom and especially with the Any% percent speedrun. So any percent for people who are still not aware what that means basically means beating the game as fast as possible. And you may have already heard that the game was beaten by speedrunners in under one hour. I'm one of these speedrunners. I have beaten Tears of the Kingdom in under one hour and we are getting lower and lower times. We are getting into the 56, 57 minute times and the speedrun is continuing to develop. Now, if you look at the screen right now, you can see that I'm currently in the intro here. And this is something that will probably become infamous for Tears of the Kingdom speedrunners as this seven minute intro is actually unskippable. The reason this is unskippable and the reason speedrunners don't start basically when we gain control of Link in the Room of Awakening is basically because you do play the game here. You, this is actually part of a playthrough, right? You move along these hallways so technically you can lose or gain time here with different strats. Like here, right? I'm currently running and you can actually see me do these little, bit, these little jumps here to gain a little bit of forward momentum as this cutscene starts to play Wizard and interacts with you and talks with you. Now, I quickly wanted to mention this because my last two videos on this channel have been very spoiler free. Because this is an any percent speed run, yeah. we will beat the game. This means you will see the final boss and the ending of the game in this run. So if you're still in your playthrough, absolutely stop watching. Probably even right now because I'm going to start talking about these things as we progress further into the game. So please, this is your spoiler warning. Get out of here if you haven't reached the main story's ending yet. Otherwise, there will be spoilers here. But let me start to talk about more about the mechanics and techniques. And there's so much to talk about with this run in general, mainly just because there's so many options. This is so new. Like by the time I upload this video, there's probably already seven new routes. I have probably learned like seven different routes through this game yet. There's a little bit of a strategy right there. You could see me do a spin attack there against these keys. Makes it so that you can kill them a little bit quicker. Yes, technically you can also do a super spin, uh, quick spin attack there, but it's a little bit inconsistent. But now I basically run down here to where Link and Zelda find Ganondorf. And now this is the big kicker because you can skip these small cutscenes here but there is usually and i will cut this out in this explanation video a cutscene here that is literally four minutes it's a four minute unskippable cutscene that you have to watch on every single speedrun attempt and probably the reason that i'm not going to stick with any percent for too long I myself, you could see the cut there uh, because now Link wakes up in the Room of Awakening and can pick up the de Decayed Master Sword. Like, I would literally start speedruns, go to this cutscene and go to the bathroom or like make breakfast. This has been my life recently. Uh, this cutscene kind of works as a little bit of a break, but it's incredibly frustrating if you make an early game mistake. You don't really want to reset because you would have to sit there and watch that four minute cutscene again. So we pick up the Decayed Master Sword. So far, this is basically just intro simulator. And if that wasn't enough, there is not going to be much for now. However, and this is something I want to report right now, there's actually a new route for the Great Sky Island in development right now that uses these wheels on the left side of the screen here that are about to start turning. Because what you can do is you can actually jump on these wheels and they will take you where the, uh, the recall shrine is. Not sure, yeah, is the name of the shrine. If you go through that area, you can actually reach a chest that has three Zonai wings inside them. And I will already give this away. Wings in this game are broken. I completely slept on them. I, I thought they seemed kind of useless at first. But the way you can jump on these wings quickly and get moving is actually incredibly, incredibly strong for going fast in the game. And you will see that a little bit here. But you can see these wheels are starting to spin now. And in the future, runners will probably jump up on them, get these early wings and go through the Great Sky Island in a little bit of a different order. I can talk about that later, but for now let's talk about what I did here to beat the game in under one hour. Um, little bit of an optimization here. You can see I crouch and then dash off these platforms. Normally when you press A here to jump, Link does this dive animation and you can see the crouch dash here actually gets me quite far forward. Allows me to skip a little bit of the swimming. Swimming is usually really slow. Now, one thing that you'll also notice here is that I'm currently not going for any of the quote-unquote new sprint techniques. There's a couple new sprint techniques because whistle sprinting was patched out. One of them, for example, being the 
crouch sprint, another one being the throw sprint, which is fairly inconsistent, tap sprinting. There's so many different methods, bow sprinting. None of them work that great. And most of the time when I see people use them, especially newer runners, they actually lose time with them because they still end up losing more stamina than they're gaining back. Throw sprinting is probably one of the more consistent ones. Crouch sprinting, if you do it in a good timing, these are new methods. I will maybe pick them up in the future, but currently they're pretty inconvenient to do and very hard to actually save time with. Like you can perform them, but making them work in your favor is not easy. Now we get the new intro screen. I have absolutely no issue with the intro screen. It's super beautiful. I love the music here a lot. It's just that that four minute cutscene is a little bit of a drag. You've also probably seen already that I'm playing the game in English. So far, the timing for the early game seems to be pretty much the same in terms of languages. Now here, I do a jump attack. What this jump attack does, it lands me on this lily pad and actually once again allows me to skip a little bit of swimming. Why does Link not take any damage from the lily pad? Video gaming. But uh, it works in our favor. We can skip water in general. You see that's something I'm going to be doing a lot because water slows down Link. Now I pick up the tree branch. This tree branch will be used for something at the Temple of Time. And then I run over to this construct here. Now some people ask, could you possibly skip talking to this guy? Because this takes quite a bit. Um, he gives you the Pura pet, which you can then later use for the map and stuff. The problem is if you actually don't get the Pura pet and you try to jump down here, you just void out. It's similar to the Great Plateau where you just like get teleported back here. And this is a good time to talk about what this new route is going to do. The new route that's going to get the early wings will actually talk to this guy then take the wings and fly all the way to the Temple of Time. And because the game doesn't update your position when you're on the wing, after you go to the Temple of Time and activate the door, you can jump off the Great Sky Island. I, I think I said Great Plateau is probably a habit from Breath of the Wild. You can jump off the Great Sky Island and you will, back, you will be uh, teleported back here to where you get the Pura Pet. And then you can fly from here towards the Ascent Shrine and you will see this old route here. No one has actually gotten a run with this new route yet. It's literally being developed as I speak. Uh, you can then take the wing over to the uh, the bottomless cave at the Ascent Shrine and save some time, get some efficient resources. In the future, you'll probably see that maybe when we proceed closer towards the sub-50 minute speedrun era. But right now, the speedrun is already crazy. So here I perform something called Moss Door Slashes, um, found by Moss and Agdor. Essentially doing jump slashes while holding back from Link allows you to carry on with your momentum a little bit more effectively. And I pick up these hot-footed frogs. They are actually incredibly valuable. I'm surprised the developers put these frogs early into the game because they are very potent for speed food. And if you don't know it, um, there used to be a pretty powerful glitch in the game that allows you to duplicate items. And most speedruns right now, top runs, are done on older versions. I'm here on version 1.0 on a physical cartridge, which means I actually lost 30 seconds to loads compared to the ideal version for this run currently, which is digital 1.1.1. But um, I get those frogs, you'll see that later, and another tree branch. And then make my way to the Temple of Time. Why? Because you need to act uh, basically activate this door, otherwise you cannot enter shrines. Once again, you see me jump over the water here. You want to avoid the dive animation. Diving is slow, water is slow. And then I walk a little bit to the left here. There's actually a spot on the wall where you basically don't even climb. You could see it there, linked it like a step up instead of going into the climb animation and I make my way to the door. But before I open the door, I will take one of my tree branches and throw it on this construct. And you could see the construct was trying to block my throw there. But if you then throw the tree branch against the shield, it will lose the shield. And you can ignore the construct, but you take the shield. And the shield is what we need in this run to duplicate items. Here's my interaction with the Door of Time. Now I can skip the cutscene and the shrines will be open. And if you look at my timer, you'll see I will go to Ascent first. And why that is, you'll see, it's uh, because it's pretty high up. And on the way, this is what this route does. You can pick up some wings, which you can then use to fly around. Once again, you'll see the power of the wings soon. I, I definitely slept on them. They also go really fast. Like it's actually hard to beat wings sometimes with the infamous hover bike, at least in speedruns, like not casually, because in speedruns, uh, the problem is, and here you see me dive. I was actually annoyed there because I lost time to the dive. Uh, but in speedruns, the time that it would take to build the hover bike would uh, be too long so that the wing would actually beat it. It's actually kind of hilarious, at least for like middle range travel. I completely ignore this construct. I will actually not kill a single one of them. And then make my way up to this Red Bull jump. 
So this is called the Red Bull Jump. It's a very precise jump where you turn around mid-jump and swing. And why is it called the Red Bull Jump? It's because uh, it gives you wings. Yeah, I know. Genius. Uh, genius creation by the community. Now, I'm going to be duplicating these wings. All you need to do for that is literally take out the wings. And it happened so quickly there. You take out the wings and then you press Y and B at the same time and you've just duplicated them. This is how easy duplication was on the previous patches. I will use a bunch of wings in this run. So that's why I did it. And... Uh, yeah, for Zonai devices, it's literally just like take them out, like use the take out prompt, press Y and B, and you have duplicated them. Uh, for items, we need to do a shield jump or we need to be diving or have a paraglider. And this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler. This run will not get the paraglider at all, um, which is sounds pretty scary, but you'll see later that it's actually not that difficult because uh, reasons. But here, pick up some spicy peppers because... And this is why this new route is going to save time. This new route that's going to get these wings early on will save a bunch of time because I will now, and this is what runners just do right now, cook these chilies to uh, basically prevent taking cold damage and then make my way up all the way to ascend. And like I just said, if we had early wings where we get the Pura Pet, which we can do, we can fly to the Temple of Time, jump off the island, we'll get teleported back to the Pura Pet. And the wing from there will take us almost all the way to Ascent, skipping this entire walk I'm about to do. Here I talk to the Construct, get the battery. You may think, is this really worth it just so you can do this boat ride I'm doing here? And the answer is yes, because if you don't get the battery here after the second shrine, what will happen is the Construct will show up anyway, give you the battery and then hint you towards locations where it can teach you how to use the battery and that just loses a bunch of time compared to getting it here. This is something that this new route I keep talking about will end up having to do because we will simply just fly over it. I will actually link a video in the description by ZFG, legendary Zelda runner, who's been working on the early wing route to give you a more general idea. This is something the community has been doing together and it's, it's just currently super exciting to be part of the community. So many speedrunning legends working together to come up with the optimal way, optimal way to play this game. Now, climb up here. Um, Want to be careful here because stamina is a little bit tight. And for that last jump, I barely make it um, in time without running out of stamina, so I can at least, at least like preserve my momentum running up here. And if you went through this area casually, you probably know that these ice walls are incredibly punishing. You basically cannot touch them at all, or you will immediately start slipping down. Do a jump here over the cold water. You need to be careful here. This is the, uh, this is not normal water. This is the cold water where your health basically starts plummeting down, even if you have cold resistance. And this is actually pretty precise. You need to be just on the last sliver of stamina to make it up that like little hill here once the stamina is recovered you climb up here and you'll see this is not bad like i'm at the ascent shrine now but gliding here would be a lot nicer and we need that early wing strat to uh, make that work so once you see speedrun records in the future and you see that early wing route you've probably heard it here first or if you watch the my or zfg stream or some other runner streams recently now, this is the Gutan Bark Shrine. I, I'm currently making an effort to learn these names. I know it sounds ridiculous and nerdy, but um, my uh, since I've, ha I've gotten sub-hour now, my next goal is um, to invest time into learning all shrines again, which used to be my favorite speedrun in Breath of the Wild. So I'm looking forward to mastering even more shrines again. I'm not going to talk about it much because I didn't tell you I was going to talk about shrines in this run. So if you have done the main story, but not all of the shrines, not going to mention more about it here, but if you want to watch my stream uh, in the next days, twitch.tv slash limcube, I will be learning fast strats for the shrines. Um, I am considering doing it glitchless, mainly because the early patch routes for all shrines will use a bunch of item duplication to skip a lot of them using powerful zone devices like rockets and time bombs. But uh, I'm still not completely decided on it yet because it's still kind of cool. Uh, let me know what you think is cooler. Do you think glitchless all shrines is cooler than... Um, the uh, duplication go fast version. I think the game gives you so many tools to go fast and looking cool that it might actually be cooler this time to run glitchless. But I do get the ascent power here and this is basically just like Breath of the Wild who would have known we have a little bit of a cutscene again where we get our ability and we can't even choose to not do it. it it's just given to us. And uh, then we use Ascent here. Now, this shrine is interesting. It is cycle-based, and currently, without a speed potion, we cannot make the early cycle. You'll see what cycle I'm talking about in a second here. So you can technically go slower here. It doesn't matter until you reach the moving platform. You'll see exactly what I mean. I still like doing a spin attack here because it looks cool. 
cutting both of the ropes. And that platform there, it was just moving to the left. Even if you play this first part perfectly, you cannot reach this platform in time to ascend through both of these pieces here. So you have to ascend when it's on the left and then wait for it to ride back. And unfortunately for now, with a speed potion three and a bow, you can make that cycle. It saves 11 seconds. And maybe in the future, that's something we'll do somehow. But as of right now, this is how the ascent shrine plays out. Activate with the terminal and for some reason the developers wanted to showcase the cutscene here of getting our first light blessing in its full glory and you cannot skip this cutscene no matter what you do. You'll have to watch it. A little bit of an update though, if you've ever watched all shrines runs in Breath of the Wild, we used to have to sit through the monk disappearing at the end. There was like text on the screen. Once that text disappears, we could skip the cutscene to have faster loading screens. This is no longer the case. Now in future shrines, you can just spam the skip button and uh, do the shrines a little bit quicker. And in general, it seems like loading um, has actually improved in this game, which is nice. So looking forward to just spamming cutscene skips in the future. Now the gloom here gets purged and we get our first light blessing. And um, just to talk a little bit about details here, this is basically the same thing again. This is like the Great Plateau. If we don't get the four light blessings, we cannot open the door at the Temple of Time, which will make it so that the cutscene where we send the Master Sword back in time won't spawn, which if that doesn't happen, you cannot leave this place. This is the exact same shenanigan again. We were never really able to fix uh, or to find a Great Plateau skip in six years of Breath of the Wild, maybe a great Sky Island skip will be found in this game would be absolutely insane. For now, it seems pretty hard because the mechanics seem very similar to the Great Plateau. Now, the run starts are pretty slow. Uh, I got to talk a little bit about the details here and about the mechanics and new route ideas. But as soon as we are at Ascent, and this is the reason we get Ascent first, things get a little bit quicker. First up, I shield jump over here to get to this ledge and I'm going to be doing a specific setup to spawn a wing and you'll see why this is so good. Shield jumping backwards and jump slashing onto the wing allows you to essentially spawn a wing mid-air without having the paraglider. And I actually didn't do it perfectly there, so my wing was kind of wobbling around. But that's not a big deal because what we'll be able to do here is literally fly all the way to the fuse shrine. Everything you see on the left and right doesn't matter because the wing directly, like, literally beelines us there to the fuse shrine and this is where we want to pick up these wings at uh, the uh, red bull jump and again because we're able to duplicate them so quickly on the this patch uh, it's just extremely easy to make great use of them uh, other than that you can see me holding the shield out i people ask me on the stream sometimes why i hold the shield out on the wing it basically makes link just walk more statically which makes the wing makes you control the wing a little bit more steadily uh, if you try and run around on the wing normally, it can tilt to the left and right in ways you don't want to, or you can even fall off. That's obviously something you want to avoid at all costs. Now, Fuse is an interesting ability because it sets us up for some of the most game-breaking glitches we'll do later in the run, uh, using the Fuse ability to make semi-powerful weapons and then using different glitches on them. It is actually... A, Obviously, one of the key reasons this game is so fast, and I will actually do a little bit of a teaser here. I keep hearing people talk about the map rune and how the map rune is so useless and, and people don't know why it exists. The map rune is actually a star in this speedrun. It allows us at least to efficiently do one of the tricks later in the run that will allow us to cut through the final bosses incredibly fast. Uh, I will once again highlight it when we get there. And we get Fuse from Raru, and then he's gonna leave, and we'll then go through the shrine. Pick up the Claymore, and we'll then fuse the boulder to it to create just a tool that can break these walls here. And then there's something else I kind of want to mention. So after I break this wall, I will go to the right and pick up a bow. And there's actually a point that some routes in the future might never get a bow. Um, this will be more apparent when we get to the real late game of this run. As of right now, we do currently get a bow. Another route that's probably even faster now actually gets a super powerful bow later, the Lionel bow. But this route here in particular could get away without getting any bow. I will not get the Lionel bow and you'll see why. What you could do here to solve this puzzle, by the way, is you could just take the fire th fruit and throw it uh, against the leaves there, skipping out all of these item boxes you just saw. You don't have to get any arrows. And then later in the army fight, where there's a bunch of enemies, you can just throw gemstones around and it works pretty efficiently. And you'll see my strategy for the real late game, where it's pretty impressive what you can do without a bow. 
But for now, we open up the door here. We got the, the key. And then we'll be fighting, quote unquote, the captain construct, very intimidating enemy. But for some reason, the uh, developers didn't care if you fight it or not. Um, and they just put breakable walls behind it and you can just break them. And that's exactly what we'll do. We let uh, him show off for a little bit, show off his, his fuse ability. He's going to try and shoot us, but we say nope and just run through. And that's the fuse shrine. Um, probably the... Uh, it's hard to say because the ascent shrine, there's like literally nothing you can do. You're just like forced to go slow, I guess. Uh, Ultra Hand is uh, my favorite shrine on the Great Sky Island. You'll see why in a little bit. Get my second light blessing. So far, this was pretty all right. Beginning to the run. It looks like I forgot to split there on my timer, so don't get confused by that. I will probably just skip the split later. I'm still getting used to when to hit that split button on the timer. Now... Talking about fusion, there is some fusions that are extremely powerful, one of which I will use soon. But first, I'm going to be doing the duplication glitch. So by shield jumping and holding out the items you want to duplicate, all we need to do is press Y and B, and we duplicate, in this case, living frogs. So I take out the frogs, I press Y and B. You have probably heard about this if you've played on early versions of the game. Now I have eight frogs, which I'll use for speed food, and then I fuse a wing to my shield. Why do I do that? You could just see it there for a little bit. It, and I've talked about it in my tips video. It actually gives you a higher shield jump, and that will, uh, that will help us a lot through the rest of this uh, Great Sky Island. After that, I picked up Choo Choo Jelly, and this will be our second ingredient for the speed potion I'm going to be making soon together with those duplicated frogs. And I actually think it's interesting. I hear a lot of people say, wait, there's a tunnel here when I run this game on stream. Uh, it, it seems like a lot of people didn't find this tunnel casually. I actually spent like seven hours on the Great Sky Island exploring mostly everything. There's still things I've missed, especially Koroks. But um, yeah, that's kind of wild. I, I run towards the cooking pot now. And also, I guess this is a little bit of a time for me to chill out uh, the LimCube VODs channel. If you want to see my first playthrough of the game, I've completely recorded it on a YouTube channel called LimCube VODs, where I literally just sat down, played the game on stream. If you want to watch me struggle and enjoy the game, um, that could be good. If you want to see me play bad too, because this was obviously a pretty solid run. But I definitely have moments where I mess up too. Now... We run over to this little wall climb, but you actually need to be a little bit careful here because there's some constructs behind you. If they notice you, they can make it so that at this next cooking pot, you are not allowed to cook and we want to use it. So I jump down here. You see this very big shield jump of the wing shield. And then I do one more duplication once again. Shield jump, hold out the choo-choo jelly, Y and B, and now I have two. And I'm going to use these two choo-choo jellies and four frogs each to cook two level three speed elixirs. And these speed elixirs are super useful now for the rest of the Great Sky Island and later for the end game. And you see, so I need to mention this. This is something that people are still not really, um, haven't really grasped yet, but speed three in this game got buffed. It doesn't actually make you run faster, but there's a mechanic in this game and you'll be able to see it a little bit here where I do this next trick, where I run forward, spawn a wing, and then jump on it. And maybe you caught it. But what they did in this game is that if you jump with a speed buff, you get a further jump. In Breath of the Wild, this was not the case. And this is because this right there. In this game, when you jump of a moving vehicle, you keep your momentum. And this counts towards running with speed level 3. In Breath of the Wild, you would just fall off. But in this game, and you'll see me ascend up here towards the Ultra and try and very fast strat that I found, by the way, smiley face. Um... So You'll, you'll uh, at least that wing part. But again, that's probably going to change in the future. Um, once again, if you run off a ledge or jump off a ledge in this game and you have a speed buff, the speed will continue to carry you forward in the air. And this is something that didn't uh, work like that in Breath of the Wild. You would simply just fall off. Gravity would pull you down. So speed three actually got a tremendous buff. And it makes you feel like it, it, it goes faster. Mainly because when you're like going... You're walking somewhere in the depths. There's like little little stones and little ledges. And it's quite possible that you run off these ledges and you keep your momentum forward, where in Breath of the Wild you would have actually noticed the slowdown. So yeah, speed three, huge buff, very powerful and very useful here for the rest of the Great Sky Island. Now we get the Ultra End Rune, which I would say is one of the least used runes in this run right now. Who knows how that changes? In Breath of the Wild, Stasis used to be super powerful. And then bombs, which we never used before, were suddenly the most broken one. Who knows? So here you see the speed 3 jump. Look at this. Speed 3, together with the wing shield, allows me to clear that entire gap. The first jump I could make just with the jump. And now this is the big part. Watch this. 
jump. High shield jump with the wing shield allows me to jump on the rail, completely skipping the part of building that puzzle there and then riding the wing shield to the end, jumping once again over the ending of the track. So this is why Ultra Hand is so fun to do. It's a very satisfying shrine to do fast. And I end up uh, being 25 seconds ahead here, going out of the Ultra Hand shrine. And this is my favorite part now of the Great Sky Island. This entire late game uh, portion of the run is because because you're just running along, you now have that speed buff. The Ultra Hand Shrine is really fun. First up, you have to deal with Raru for a second here. He's going to talk to you about the fact that you are now maybe ready to uh, open the door at the Temple of Time to then just bait you and be like, oh, never mind. There's actually a second door here and you need another shrine. I jump down here, jump into the water. And this is one of my favorite threads. It's a bounce you can get uh, with a shield if you jump when Link's feet just hit the water. It's super satisfying to do. Um, and it's especially powerful with the wing shield because once again, the wing shield gives you a higher jump. And you could see uh, me just getting this huge bounce over there, keeping that momentum and avoiding any swimming. I absolutely love that thread. And we run to the Temple of Time. We are able to open this door now. And we will then get the recall power, which um, that is my prediction will probably eventually be one of the most uh, broken powers. We've already seen some early ideas of how to abuse recall for movement tech. I wouldn't be surprised if the future has us break recall a little bit more. In fact, the most broken rune for movement, I'm sure you've maybe seen it already, is actually auto build. Auto build allows us to do something called auto build sliding, which is pretty similar to the BLSS glitch from Breath of the Wild. It's kind of wild that a rune that no one probably imagined would be broken is like currently kind of the most broken one. Arguably, fuse is obviously kind of essential, and Ultra Hand has uses. You can like fly around with these jets. You've probably seen those pop on, uh, up on YouTube called uh, with a glitch called uh, Ghost Glue, where you have an immovable object and you just Ultra Hand the other one and fly around. So yeah. Um, in this speedrun, we are not able to do that, as this requires, at, 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 at least as of right now, a specific NPC interaction with the two NPCs that are the Riverside stable. So not really uh, passing by those guys, and we have our own tech. Now, Raru reveals to us that um, Zelda probably left this tier for us. We should go forward, open the door. I do, once again, a wing jump. Super powerful here, skipping that first wheel. Use the wheel to get up to the door of Vitality here. And uh, then this is actually a pro tip. You don't need to even try. You just press B. Link gives up. And Raru tells you that this is a test of vitality and you need to find another shrine. In this case, Nancho Ya, the recall shrine. I'm watching make this run and I'm realizing I played quite well at this point. I haven't really made big mistakes, hit pretty much all of the jumps, um, at least for this route. I did end up getting a pretty solid time here and once again lost 30 seconds because I'm only on 1.0 physical at the moment for... Um, the uh, glitches, so I am not as fast as I could be. But uh, interesting. Now here I made a mistake. I actually pulled out the map. You can jump there before pulling out the map and you will skip that animation of Link, um, you know, getting the, sh the Pura pad, almost said Sheikah's late, the Pura pad out. And then we'll warp back to the Room of Awakening because we will go to Recall. Or not sure, so, yeah, the shrine where we, you can use Recall in. Or we get our tutorial. Now, um, much easier jump here to get up there. Now that we have the ascent rune, if you jump over to this ledge, it lets you ascend right here, and you can still skip that wings uh, that that not wing ring ring section. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we don't have ascent when we start the game, so uh, we we'll, we'll have to grind out jumping along those uh, wheels, and it'll be difficult, especially without recall. But that is shrine number four and also the last shrine that this run will get. You see the loading screens here are not exhilarating because again it's the physical version but probably a slight improvement over Breath of the Wild. And we don't have to talk to Raro here, we already have the ability so we just head straight forward. And this is actually similar to the Ascent Shrine. It's a little bit more fun but it's also cycle based. If you remember the shrine from your casual playthrough there is a puzzle at the end that you can't really do much about, at least as of right now. So if you miss one of the cycles where the two, I guess, kind of like hands, what do you call them at the clock? I think you call them clock hands, right? If, if they um, don't overlap, you have to wait anyway. So I made a pretty good cycle there. Then get the last blessing. 
Now this is where you would see some routes uh, have a little bit of a difference. Um, some people at this point would go jump down and pick up a ruby as a gemstone for the boss fights later. And then a shield. Uh, the route that I was doing that at the time um, was slightly faster is I would actually skip this and get a different gemstone instead in a little bit here. Closer towards the, uh, the end game portion. And I will get a topaz instead. Actually, at first people were getting the topaz, then people were getting the rupas, uh, the ruby, then they were getting the topaz again, and now they're probably getting the ruby again. This is just the state of the speedrun, like everything is constantly changing. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight of how broken speedrunning already is. And the broken stuff hasn't happened yet. Like, it, we're, like I'm not sure if you see my timer right now, but the next split after interacting with the altar here is called steering sticks. And that's not a joke. <laughs> So I missed uh, the water ones here. It is a little bit precise. No, not a big deal. The, the real broken stuff is only here to, to come. Uh, but yeah, the routes are constantly changing. Again, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a look into the state of the game. Um, I will constantly uh, continue to look into it, learn the new strats, and um, either run them on my stream or make some videos about them. Now we can finally go back to the all time. If I remember correctly, I made a pretty big mistake here. Probably my... Biggest mistake on the Great Sky Island. Let me see if this is the right run I'm thinking of. It is. <laughs> and you can see the power of the wing shield. Like, I actually jumped too far with it there. This was the combination of speed 3. And you can actually, if you have the right cycle, jump all the way to that wheel. Uh, and skip that little moving around I'm doing here. But it's kind of incredible how far and um, fast you can go with this combination of wing shield and speed potion. Now we get the... Lights of Blessing. By the way, how do you guys call Lights of Blessing? Do you, like, no one says Lights of Blessing, right? Like, I feel like if I've talked to people, either people said Light Blessings or Blessings, or some people still say Spirit Orbs, which I feel like is easily done. Light of Blessing? I haven't really heard much, but maybe there's some other cool ways to call them that sound more natural to me. We have four hearts, and we can open the door, and we'll make our way to the altar. Finally, to send back the Master Sword in time, send the Master Sword back in time, and uh, then we'll be able to leave the Great Sky Island. Should I go for the running wing strat to prove the haters wrong? Now, there's actually a little bit of a trick you can do here at the end of uh, the section. I remember this. I, I Maybe you can hear this because the game audio will be low in the back. I asked my chat, should I go for this new strat? And I'm pretty sure I failed it. And I lost like a ton of time at the end. Yes, yes. Oh my god. If I didn't go for this thread, I would have PB'd by so much. I, I don't know. I, I swear I'm not lying. Maybe you could hear it in the back. I was asking my chat, should I go for the new tech? And that was the new tech, actually. Jumping over on the wing to skip the ascent. I failed it and I lost so much time. That's incredible. I just remember this. I could have gotten like a top three time or something. Oh man. Well, maybe not top three, but like top five. I think I still got a top ten run here, but um, that's crazy. Anyway, I'm definitely blaming my chat on this one, not me who messed up the strat. And we finish off the uh, Great Sky Island here. A 36, I definitely would usually like to see a 35 here with this route, but it's okay. In the future, we'll probably see like sub 30s <laughs> once we figure out this early wing route. Right, now, this is interesting. So um, I'm going to do another one of those backflip wing setups here, just like I did after the... Um, a sand shrine to make my way over to an island and you've probably seen uh, again people that will get the ruby will go to a slightly different island the routes will vary here a little bit but what this route does it goes over to this island down there you can kind of see it in the distance and for the same reason though um, it's the exact same reason because the two islands you can go to you have ferries and these ferries, maybe something rings a bell here, are pretty good. Um, in Breath of the Wild, we used to do glitches where we would literally get 999 of them. It's a glitch called IST. Some of you may have missed out on this one. Um, but and, and, and I said this, like if you ever watched my LimCube Plus channel when I was like going, um, doing a countdown for this game to come out, I always said, dude, if we ever find it, like material duplication in this game, it's broken because we can make powerful weapons, we can duplicate fairies again and n never die. And that's exactly what happened like two weeks into the game and easier than ever. You can do it with pressing two buttons. And this is what we're doing. We're going over here to get fairies and we're going to be duplicating them, allowing us to go for risky jumps, uh, faults that would otherwise kill Link. 
and um, just go for much more risky and faster strats. And, and in fact, this route right now would actually need fairies. Even if you played perfectly, there are specific things you need to do where you simply would just take damage. So yeah, fairies are, as of right now, required. Maybe you saw on my other channel, Limq+, Plus, I posted this original idea for the fairy route like weeks ago, and this is kind of what this developed into. Now, we go over here, and this is interesting. So you can see the floor here is kind of sandy. It doesn't really look sandy, but it counts as sand because it makes sandy footsteps. And this makes it so that I, at this moment, I can duplicate items without losing shield durability. If, you, if you're still on an old patch, or if you ever um, go back for it, with, uh, to it using like a physical cartridge, if you do shield jumps like this to duplicate, try and find sandy surfaces, try and find um, dirt, uh, you, I think you see that later. Um, you can duplicate there without lo use, losing your shield. And you can actually see me for a second. I fused a rocket there to my shield. And this will be super clutch later. And I do another one of those backflip wing spawns. This one will take me towards the Dig Dog suspension bridge. And this is where we're going to pick up our steering sticks. It'll make much more sense to explain why we are getting steering sticks in this run. Once we actually get to the point where we use them. But we are, for now, this is what you need to know, we're getting them. Um, and we are not making a hover bike. That's all I can say. Some of you may already know where this is going, by the way. Uh, I know a lot of creators have already covered how broken this game is. I wanted to give you a showcase of a full run and commentate basically everything that happens in detail. But yeah, we're getting them. And you'll see here, this doesn't look super fast, like standing on the wing and just chilling. But I've compared so many different options with this wing and... Even if you put like two fans onto a wing, you don't really save time because yes, the two fans make the wing go slightly faster, but sticking the fans on usually takes just as long as the time that you save from having fans on it. A simple wing, especially when you spawn it with a backflip like this, is really hard to beat. I'm shocked every day. I feel like the more I play this game, the more I realize wing is OP. Okay, diving down here, no uh, Fs given because uh, you know, we are fairies. I've already duplicated a bunch of them. I hold up this wing here in position just for a little bit and then use recall on it. This will allow me to jump on the wing, give me a little bit more height, and then I can ascend through the ceiling here. And maybe you've done this casually. I remember doing it. Uh, and there's a chest here and I was like, oh my god, this is probably a secret item. Maybe like a legendary sword? No. It's uh, three steering sticks. And casually, I would have hated this. But uh, in the speedrun, this is like literally the reason we go here. And I've just duplicated them with the same trick I used to duplicate the wings earlier. And then we'll warp back to the Ultra Hand Shrine. Now, again, why steering sticks? So uh, from now on, and you see it on the timer, the next split is called Zagel. Zagel is a glitch that allows you to essentially make duplicates of a weapon and then hold it in your hand but kind of invisible so let's say you have one strong spear and one stick every time you perform the zuggle um you use your stick and you make a copy of the strong spear and it's kind of like stuck to link's hand i do a pretty cool strat here by the way a running wing to make my way towards hyrule castle which will be going next so so we're making copies of a weapon and we are kind of smuggling them this is this is called zuggle because it was found by a community member that started with a z and um it's a smuggle Right, so that's what zuggling means. We're gonna make invisible copies of weapons, and this is how you can deal insane damage. You'll see this done later against the final boss. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna zuggle this boulder claymore that Link has currently on his back, and the shields that I have collected in the run. I've only collected one shield, I will collect another one in a second here. And we're gonna do that exactly 12 times. And what that does is it overloads the game, and that breaks it. The second the game is overloaded, things don't really work well anymore. And one of the things that doesn't work well anymore is the interaction of Link mounting horses or steering sticks. And we're going to make use of that in a second here. But first, I ride my way towards Castle Town. You can see the wing is timing out here, which is something that just happens. And also, super frustrating sometimes that there's random wind that can kind of catch your wing. And you can see here, I'm standing on the left, but the wing is still trying to go right. Uh, it's something you just have to deal with, at least with these wings. And now I'm a little bit further away from my target than I would want to, so I perform another one of those moss door slashes, the backwards jump slash to get myself closer there. I think I will actually do another one here. Because my goal is a chest. Pretty close to where I am now. 
that contains a topaz and that topaz is very powerful you've probably used it casually the gemstones in general the more rare ones have this big elemental explosion and that's actually incredibly useful for fighting ganondorf's army now we get the topaz and then this is my one and only use of amiibo in the run it's literally <laughs> kind of funny how little it does but it's slightly faster just like it was in breath of the wild um you, you just spawn a pona to ride over here i would then jump off a pona pick up the second shield which i will use for this zagle glitch i just teased and then get off on a pona again and ride a little bit further now this is where this route is different than what you may have seen in some other world records where you go into the castle because this route and this is what makes the topaz good you can clip right here literally just on this bridge and and clip what does clipping mean you'll see in a second uh, first i start off with the zagal glitch um no actually first i start duplicating some more topaz because i only have one topaz right now i'm gonna need a bunch more if i want to defeat ganadov's army so uh, basically every single shield jump i can literally spawn eight topaz out of thin air it's absolutely ridiculous how broken this duplication is and how early we found it i went around 20 or so that's normally enough. I think I go for like a little bit more here just to be safe. And then I start with the Zuggle. So basically, and this is where the map rune comes in. When you open the map rune, you have a little bit of downtime where you can do some interesting stuff with your weapons. In my case, what happens is basically I hold out a weapon, open the map, drop that weapon and equip another. And I do the same with the shield. I drop my equipped shield and equip another. And then... When I open the menu itself, I drop those weapons. But because Link's back is kind of against the wall, he can't actually drop weapons. So instead, those weapons get smuggled into Link's hand. And he technically is wielding them in like a broken way. And with this strat that I'm doing right now, I'm able to do one weapon zuggle and one shield zuggle at once. Which allows me to do this in six overall Zuggle steps. Yeah, that's a sentence I just said. You can already see the game kind of breaking here. One of the boulder hammers fell on the floor. And once I do this one more time, my game is overloaded. And this allows me to get on the steering stick and then just fall through the map. And you'll see in a second why this is good. Not only am I <laughs> discovering the royal hidden passage that you normally only discover after doing your first temple, but once you see where I'm actually at here, things get a little bit wild. I'm actually falling directly into the depths. Right here is the room with all the ice enemies on your way to Ganondorf. Right here is where the game started, with all of the luminous ore. And right here is the actual beginning of the army boss. The music is gonna randomly start kicking in again. I fall onto this ledge right here. And I don't know if I got this in my run. I didn't. Um, there's actually a clip that can happen called Ragdoll Clip, where Link just falls through that second wall. That's not a big deal for us though. Um, because we can simply go on the stick. I, I Unfortunately, my clip didn't work here to re-equip my weapon and then go on the stick again and fall through that second floor. And now we are immediately at the final boss of the game. And now let me explain to you how this normally would work in the game if you played it like this. Normally, you would have to fight Ganondorf's army, the whole thing, without sages. Then you would have to fight all major bosses of the game from all of the temples, including the Spirit Temple, including the Phantom Ganons from Hyrule Castle, and then you can go to Ganondorf. Now here I shocked myself intentionally because I want to get rid of the bow I was using and instead use the Knight's Bow. Um, and then I'm going to just fire off a bunch of Topaz here. You could already see how this Topaz is basically just clearing out this army super quickly. You can even shoot them right next to you in the most ideal places because um, you have so many fairies, right? The, this is actually the hardest part of the army fight. Uh, because this big boss Boku is relatively tanky, but you can just gun him down with Topaz Arrow. One more will do it here. And then uh, what I'm going to be doing soon, I think I miss it here because the next phase starts rolling in. I want to pick up his horn. This will be needed for the fight against Ganondorf. Now the Zalfos spawn in. This is a pretty annoying phase because they start running at you really quickly. At least the music here is great. Um, that's something that I can always appreciate. And I want to pick up a Royal Halberd. The Royal Halberd is above where Flurry Rush attacks do double damage. It's not specifically written this way, but this is what it does. If you have a 60 damage Halberd uh, with a Royal Halberd fused, uh, it will do 120 damage for Flurry Rush attacks. And I'm going to use this Black Boko Horn, fuse it to that Halberd to make the Ganon fight easier. And I will do some other things with it to make it extremely easy. But that's the Lazalfos phase, went pretty well. And now next we got the Gipto phase, which is uh, probably the easiest, because they are pretty slow and they are weak to elemental damage, which is what we are using anyway for the fight. 
I run over to the other side of the arena, have them basically all group up together, fire one, and then another, and I think one ended up surviving here, that guy back there somehow always manages to dodge the big area of effect, but I take them down pretty, pretty cleanly. Oh, I remember this now. <laughs> there was a random guy behind me somehow. Uh, so I think I ended up losing like three seconds uh, here in the Gibdo phase, which is something that you don't like to see. Especially, and you'll see this soon, my final time here was very close to breaking a minute barrier that I would have liked to have broken. Um, but yeah, these small mistakes do add up. Now, Moblin phase, also pretty easy. You basically just shoot a bunch of these Topaz arrows. I think four will usually do the job, kind of left to right, and then that middle um, Moblin is a bit more tanky, so I need to shoot more there. And then the army has been defeated. Now, this is where the boss rush starts, normally. Normally it starts out with Colgera, and there was actually a time where we did speedruns where we fought Colgera without the paraglider. It was wild, it was hard, and we don't do it anymore, because, yes, we have found a way already to skip the whole thing, the whole boss rush. Like three weeks into the game. And it's by doing the steering st uh, stick clip again. We just place it here, get on it, drop down, done. Because what you need to do is you need to defeat the army, then the Ganondorf boss fight becomes active. I drop my weapons here to get rid of this overloaded Zagal state, because otherwise when you get to Demon Dragon, you will literally fall through the Light Dragon, through Zelda, and just soft lock. So I need to kind of like do some preparations here, pick up some rocket shields, which I have duplicated by doing that Zagal glitch earlier. They will come in handy for the Demon Dragon fight. And now I can run to Ganondorf and fight him. It took us years in Breath of the Wild to find a single boss skip. We found a skip for like 12 phases of boss fights in three weeks. That's the state of the game right now. Uh, I've used my horn to the, the boss poker horn here, to the spear, to the halberd, and I will do once again the Zagal glitch, but much quicker. This time I will only do it four times on this halberd to basically make it deal four times damage to Ganon. Uh, and it'll make him go down really quickly. You'll see here, I haven't actually lost, I've actually lost count. I think I've already done it three times, so I only need to do it one more time here. And then I have a weapon ready to defeat the Demon King. So now the boss fight is active. If I had to try to clip through the door when the army was still there, it wouldn't have worked. The army being defeated is what activates this trigger for the boss. And you can see, you can see Zagal here pretty well. I have one weapon kind of stuck to my hand. That's the smuggled one. The one on my back is the real one. And this is uh, how much damage you do with the setup. Yep. One flurry rush uh, will just take him down. And that, that's what you do for every single phase. I don't remember how well my Ganondorf fight went here, so I got the flurry rush immediately. Right there, he gave me the spear, which is usually a pretty good one, in phase two. And he also attacked me immediately, you can get some bad RNG there, but this was good. And then you do have to sit through this cutscene here of uh, Ganondorf waking up to his full power for phase three. And then it'll be pretty much the same. Now, what I wanted to try here uh, is I wanted to actually get rid of my Zagled state again at the end. But I added a little bit too much damage. At least it's going to cause something pretty interesting to happen when the fight against the Demon Dragon begins. So you can look forward to that. But I was a little bit upset about it because I could have went for a slightly more ideal strat. But here, phase three, I rush forward instantly to make him dodge me. This way I can dodge, I, I can skip one of the free rushes, right? Normally I would have to do free rush first, then he does it. But if I make him free rush first, I can then react to it and get him just down. And that's literally <laughs> the Demon King out of the way. And I was 40 seconds ahead here, feeling pretty good. Now, what if I told you that the Demon Dragon is the hardest part of the run? I personally believe so. I have not, I've, this is the, the part I've practiced the most in the whole game, at least as of right now. It's especially ridiculous with this route where you don't have access to the Lionel Bow. Um, because you have to go for something pretty ridiculous. I ended up missing it here in my run. I uploaded a video of it on Limq Plus, which I will link in the description, uh, to show you the perfect way of doing this without a bow. It's absolutely wild, but I still got a decent... I, I still, you'll still see the idea here in this run. First of all, um, enjoy the black screen simulator. This load is literally like 40 seconds long on 1.0 on the cartridge. But look at this. The Zagal is now still active. And I'm about to really show you the true meaning of this game. I think a lot of people have already uncovered this themselves, but this wasn't Tears of the Kingdom. It never was. Uh, I think we, we all have kind of encountered this from playing the game more. This has been Spears of the Kingdom all along. 
Uh, spears in this game are incredibly powerful, and I think this cutscene is a beautiful way to highlight this, as the Zuggled Spear is still stuck to Link's hand. And he's gonna realize it himself as he raises the Master Spear up into the sky. <laughs> it, it's um, cool, honestly. Actually, it does look good. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it uh, breaks immersion a little bit here. Yeah, also, some of you may have been surprised. Wait, why did you even get the Master Sword? This is what happens if you don't have it going into the fight. I, I guess it makes sense because you're like on Zelda and the Master Sword is there. I guess this time she's not struggling, so you don't need stamina to get it. And the game just gives it to you. I, I still don't really know how to feel about it, but we're going to use it here for the final boss. And this is Demon Dragon. It's a interesting fight and the polar opposite from Dark Beast Ganon in Breath of the Wild, which was essentially just a glorified auto-scroller. It's uh, a wild ride. So, the fight starts and I let Zelda basically climb all the way up because you can, you can jump off the dragon right now, but you will literally not be able to do any hits because when he's flying around and glowing, he, you cannot land on him. So you wait until he starts doing his attack, run down and go on eye number three. So this is the strategies here for the no bow demon dragon. You immediately go down to eye number three and hit it as fast as you can. In my case, I actually go for um, beams here because the beams kill it in two beams instead of four attacks with the master sword. And because my spear is kind of like stuck to the master sword, sometimes you get weird damage. You will actually see this at the end of the run. Now I climb up on the dragon, switch to the rocket shield, and I look at the Z coordinate on the minimap, the last coordinate. Once it's at 2350-ish, I jump off, go into the dive, and hold back and right. And I look at Ganondorf. And you see Ganondorf is like doing the circle, he does this every time. I position myself above Ganondorf, over this eye, and then dive down. And I lost some time here, and this is what made me fail the strat. Because what you need to do here is you need to kill this eye super quick, rocket to dodge the blast of the eye exploding, dive forward and run as fast as you can to the other eye. Because normally with the bow you can shoot the other eye, but here you can get these super long shield jumps when Ganondorf is leaning to the right. And because I didn't land on the eye perfectly, you see he's done with this attack now, so he's about to fly away. I just miss it. I get one hit in and he starts becoming invulnerable. So if I played this a tiny bit better, I would have been able to hit that eye and I would have been able to get a 58 minute, like probably like a mid 58 minute time at the time, like a top three time or something. Pretty annoyed that I missed this thread. Once again, I will link a video of me hitting all of this first uh, try in the video because I think it's really awesome. In the future, this will probably change. I wouldn't be surprised if we technically find some way to one cycle this guy in the future. Was a little bit upset here because I had to wait for Zelda to go back up and then ended up hitting uh, the other two eyes here a little bit slower. But the Demon Dragon is wild, um, especially coming out of Breath of the Wild, a uh, game that essentially had a glorified auto scroller at the end into something that's super intense is both, I guess, cool, but also scary. Like world record runs will die in this fight. So get ready for that as you are gonna get into watching Tears of the Kingdom 90%. It's, it's, it's super intense, at least it's cool. It's like, I personally, in my casual playthrough, just like straight up cried here because I think the symbolism is beautiful. The music is amazing. And I don't mind practicing this fight because it's epic, but it, it's scary in runs. Now, I, okay, I just had to deal with this. I dive down for the other ice because the strat wasn't going to work anymore. And I do have another strat in my sleeve, though, for the final uh, secret stone, which is once again really cool. And you see how weak my damage is here. Normally, the Master Sword breaks the eye in four hits, but because I have the spear stuck to it, it was a little bit buggy. This is why I usually like dropping the spears uh, at the end of Ganondorf. But yeah, I have more rocket shields. And I found this strat like literally yesterday from the time of recording this video, and everyone was popping off because this is amazing. Um, using another rocket shield here after Zelda climbs all the way up. Ganon gets into position to do his final attack. The secret stone is vulnerable. And if you shield him with the rocket, you go forward, right? But when your rocket despawns, you actually still keep that momentum going forward. So I like skip this entire phase of diving, dodging the attacks immediately end up on the secret zone and unfortunately, and you'll see this here, this is where the buggy spear damage really kind of destroyed me. Like look, I'm just not getting damage there. And uh, my final time, I'll give it away here, was a 59.05. So maybe because of swings like this, I missed the 58. It's fine. Um, there's so many new strategies to add in the future. The timing, by the way, for this run ends not on the final hit on Ganondorf, but instead of when you actually catch Zelda, which is the whole reason the split is called hand-holding. 
you get the final attack here and then a little bit of diving. But yeah, this is a good time to say I hope you enjoyed this brief look into the absolutely early uh, but extremely already broken Tears of the Kingdom speedrunning world. I will be continuing to follow any percent, will be pushing for top times. Um, uh, it's been a lot of fun to actually try like you can see i'm not doing face cam here in these streams because i was actually trying to play well uh, i was able to help a lot with the routing for the game and i'm pretty proud um that i'm got some pretty top times early on and i will continue to do so now this is the best part i'm not sure if you've already seen it but this is the literally equivalent of spears of the of spears of the kingdom the spear is still stuck to link's hand and they will uh, they uh, you'll see what's about to happen but yeah this is once again a good time to tell you i'm streaming these runs on twitch i'm going to continue to cover speed runs and challenge runs as well in the future on youtube we'll be learning all shrines soon i have a bunch of challenge runs ideas it's like some super intricate stuff not like your classic can i beat breath of the wild with only i don't know swords or something i'll i'll have some pretty cool stuff cooking but look at this <laughs> this is the perfect ending moment for this run in particular spears of the kingdom both of them agree that weapon is extremely powerful. 5905 was the final time here. Was okay with it, but I can get a much better one in the future. You can see my summer best was already at 57. And at the time of the recording, it's almost at a low 56. But yeah, they dive in the water here. This is it. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Tears of the Kingdom 80%. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.